Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we have a look at KDE Linux. This is in development just out of alpha, kind of looking at the testing stages right now. And the idea here behind KDE Linux is to have an official KDE distribution based on Arch with an immutable backbone. So that means that it's one of those distros that's not a regular mainstream distribution as we are used to using them. Everything is done on containers and images, making it hard to break the system. It does have its limitations. I've mentioned in the past the immutable distributions are not really my cup of tea, uh, but it is good to see uh, that uh, there are a number of these options out there for people, and having one that's official and based on KDE is actually a, a pretty good thing. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, what we're doing. Of course, the first thing I want to address here is how would this differ from KDE Neon? Now, over the past, if you look at my older videos on KDE Neon, and I mentioned that KDE Neon is not a distro, well, they've kind of shifted away from that. And I was like, well, was I really going crazy? No, I went back to, uh, what is this, 2018. And uh, what is it? They say it's a KDE Neon is a rapidly updated software repository. Most users want to use the packages built from release. Uh, from the user additions, KDE contributors and testers can use the packages built from KDE Git in the developer editions. It uses the foundation. You know, is it the KDE distro? No. They believe it's important to work with many distributions. There's even a, is it a distro? Not quite. It's a package archive with the latest KDE software on top of the stable base. Well, we have installable images. Unlike full Linux distributions, we're only interested in KDE software. That's what they said in 2018. The website as it stands right now, they do now officially call it a Linux distribution. Uh, it is based on the latest LTS Ubuntu with the latest of KDE software. And that's uh, effectively what it has always been. Uh, the is it the distro? Uh, they say no. And you'll notice the lack of the one question is it a distro? So they've basically now, we can officially call KDE Neon a KDE distro. So we can do away with the old uh, old phrase, their, their old terminology that it's not a distro. It is. But the thing is, is that KDE Neon is like any other Linux distribution. It is not immutable. It is based on Ubuntu. You can use it as any other Linux distribution. And this brings us into KDE Linux. What they're doing here is, this is a KDE, an official KDE distribution put together by the KDE team, but it is uh, much easier. Like it's not, I will say it is easier. Once you learn how to use it, it is easier to maintain than a traditional Linux distribution. It is not as inclined to break because of the immutability. That does come with some some negatives. Uh, for example, it's a lot harder to to install software that is not readily available inside of Snap or Flatpak, although the software offerings in those two are certainly increasing. However, what we say here uh, is uh, it's not going to be something that is going to uh, be in full production yet. This is still a work in progress, so don't install it on your your main uh, main computer. Of course, they say don't install it on your non-technical uncle's computer or the accounting department at work. Please don't do that. Uh, but uh, what they are looking at here, uh, looking over at the wiki, uh, KDE Linux, codename Project Banana, KDE owned general perfect Linux based distribution system revealed at Academy 2024, being developed uh, with the KDE team, not to be confused with Neon. So KDE Linux is an immutable base operating system that does not include traditional package manager. Apps can be installed from Flatpak, Snap, or app images and various other options for getting it, such as you know manually installing like Homebrew and stuff like that. Uh, systems involve replacing the entire OS image entirely with a new one. Now this uses ButterFS and it's going to cache the latest five versions. So you can always go back to the last five versions, of course, once it's up. I've installed it and pushed the update, so I actually have two available. For this, it does require bigger disk space. It initially said that I I did not have enough disk space to install this, but I was actually able to get it installed. So 
It'll give you a warning about disk space. Uh, the disk that I'm using right here is a 32, uh, 32 gigabyte, and it would like at least 40. But it still installs with less than that. I'm just not sure uh, how long it's going to work. There are a number of issues with it still that they talk about. Again, this is a work in progress. It is not something that is uh, fully ready to go. But uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and poke around a little bit. Uh, so we, uh, this is installed. The only other thing I installed is the, um, I installed Blue Recorder, which we're using to record this. Uh, this is a Wayland only system. So uh, Blue Recorder does work, ha has worked on most distributions. I've tested on Wayland only in the past. So that's why I went with Blue Recorder, which was available as a flat pack. Uh, having a look at all the applications, uh, most of these applications are installed. If it's not a, a core KDE application, it is going to be a, um, a flat pack. So you can see this is the one that I installed, GPU screen recorder. Uh, I canceled the installation for that. I'm not sure why that installed or if it actually did. So I don't know. We'll have a look. But uh, you can see that it doesn't have an excessive amount of stuff on it, but it does have just enough basic information. Let's go ahead and pull up a terminal here. And uh, we'll just do a flat pack list. And you can see these. So GPU screen recorder apparently was installed. Uh, I'm not sure why. I canceled that before it got going. But oh well, anyway, it's still there. Uh, Blue Recorder, I installed that one. Everything else was installed by them. Now, it does not actually have any snaps installed, but since it tells us no snaps are installed yet, SnapD is installed. Uh, there is not a snap store, and I did check that in Discover. And Discover is configured right now to use only uh, flat packs. Uh, so here's flat hub here and everything else in here is, um, well, not snaps. So by default, if you go in and you want to search for any form of software, let's say audacity, we want to search for that. Then we have this and we have this only available from flat hub. So we do not have any snap configured with to work with discover at this time. And I don't recall how easy it is to get snap installed uh, working with discover. It might be easy to do. It might not. So if I wanted to install the snap store, I just do snap install and I believe it is snap dash store. going to ask for your password and I definitely Hit a couple sticky fingers there, so let me do that. And then here you can see it's downloading this. So what this is going to give us is going to give us a second software store, which will be able to install all of your uh, all of your flat packs. Excuse me, all of your snaps. So flat packs you do through Discover, snaps you do through here, and uh, Pac-Man does not exist on the system. In fact, I tested that out. Does it actually work or not? And uh, the reality is, no, it does not. All right, so that is done installing, and we did get a warning here uh, that uh, it's not uh, found in Snap Bin, uh, possible because this is an immutable system. But if I go to the uh, App Center in here, you can see that we have the App Store here feature down here. Um, maybe we should uh, be adventurous and try and install something. Let's see, is FileZilla available as a Snap? I'm curious. Uh, nope, this is though. Let's go ahead and just install this. Go ahead and once again, go ahead and enter your password. So I did, uh, while that was uh, installing, I did look up again how we can get Snap configured with your uh, Discover. And uh, this seems to be something the developers are probably going to need to do because usually what there is, if you go into your settings, there's a missing backends which will say, hey, uh, we see that you have Snap installed. Well, I'm getting that massive cursor thing again. See, you have Snap installed, but it's not uh, not configured, and you'd click to install, but that is when you have a package manager discovers inter interacting with, like Pac-Man or, or Apt in the case of Ubuntu or Neon. Uh, so uh, that is actually not there. It would be nice if the developers... Um, would come in and make sure that you could do your snaps from Discover in addition to your flat packs if we are going to rely on it. So that would be something that that would be nice. We're just going to wait for this guy to finish installing and then we'll test that that works out correctly as well. All right, so that's done. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's see, make sure that opens. And maybe 
will do SFTP client. So it looks like it's over here. Uh oh, that one may not be working. Let's get out of here. SFTP client, give that just a second. Okay, that one's not working. So I'm not sure if that is immutable system snaps to installing right, or um, we might need to reboot the system or at least log out of the desktop, log back in. We're not going to do that since we're recording the screen. So I can't test right here in this video if snaps actually will work or not. Uh, we did get some uh, some issues there. Uh, everything in Flatpak should be working. Like I said, I did install the screen recorder that we're using here uh, to record the video. That's uh, That seems to be working. And uh, everything else here, uh, everything else here looks good. So uh, overall, not a not a bad system. If you're looking for an Arch-based immutable system and you like Plasma, this might be a good distribution for you to to start exploring now. Again, it's not ready for mainstream use, but um, and there are obviously a known known quirks that they have about it. And uh, I don't know. I'll have to reboot this, and I'll let you know in the in the um, uh, description or the pinned comment if rebooting the system actually allowed us to work with uh, with the snaps or not. But uh, uh, there is uh, a nice uh, nice look at uh, the development of this. It's looking pretty good. You can grab it uh, from kde.org slash Linux. So if you just go right on over kde.org slash Linux, this is where you can get all of the information about the KDE Linux uh, so the installation here, it does give you just a raw image file. Uh, I did have a few issues with this. I'm not sure if that was related to the new Linux Mint or something else going wrong, but I could not get that thing written in Linux Mint. I end up uh, moving the raw file into my server and transferring it over to my Raspberry Pi and using the Pi uh, imager to put the raw image onto a disk. And then I am running this on real hardware, so this is not virtualization. They said in the uh, in the original readout, it uh, I forget it was I reading it OMG Ubuntu or it's FOSS or one of them about this. They said you cannot use it under a uh, under the uh, virtualization, and technically you can. It's just a lot harder to do. So always worth testing this one out on real hardware if you can. I'm not sure what's going on with those mouse cursors either. That's another thing we need to look at. But anyway, uh, there is a brief look. You can get information from it over there. Have a look at it. And uh, uh, more people contributing back to them, uh, better off the distribution is going to be. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.